everybody. Josh Arvin Nerd with Bish's RV here with some updated footage on a uh, floor plan you really liked last year. The 252 from Surveyor. This is a fantastic freaking couples camper right here. Under 30 feet, only what, 75 to 7,700 pounds fully max loaded, something in that range. Fits half ton towing, generally speaking, very, very nicely. Always double check your individual tow capacities, of course. But it gives us a private true queen bedroom with some very good, respectable storage. It is totally carpetless and easy to clean, even with a central vacuum to take that up another notch to really keep it 100. Um, it's easy to miss, but behind this entertainment center, which is facing straight on a theater seat, by the way, uh, you have yourself a big walk-in pantry tame storage center right here, which really also kind of creates like a miniature hallway, very cleanly separating, I think, things like the kitchen and the bathroom, so you don't have to feel like you crap where you eat. That's never something anyone really enjoys. Although, if you leave that bathroom door open, you can have an amazing staring contest between the theater seat and the toilet. Unfortunately, you can't watch TV from the can man, but that's an entirely different topic for an entirely different day. The RV is a little bit taller inside, six foot nine sidewalls, which means a taller person like me, a little over six foot, can stand in the shower very easily and never have to worry about banging my head in anything. This also has a very respectable cargo carry capacity, uh, which is expanded a little bit by the, the way that they're using some Asdell. Uh, basically, anywhere you see some fiberglass, there's Asdell right below it. And what that does is it peels a little bit of weight out of the RV in every area, and less weight on the RV means uh, you know more variance between the dry weight and the GVW, which means you can bring more cargo with you without overload the thing. And and that's a problem that a lot of RV manufacturers are not addressing. Surveyor's done a great job addressing the things that you really wanted to see last year, and I can't wait to see what you think about the updates on this one. And to me, this is one of those floor plans that it just makes sense the moment you walk inside. You walk inside, you turn your head left, you see this, okay? Dining, TV, makes sense. Especially when on the way in the door, first, you're actually staring at this theater seat. So you realize right away. You are sitting right on boardwalk and park place like the Max L Tapes uh, old commercial, just enjoying your entertainment right there. It is mounted a little high. It's not the worst I've ever seen, so I'll give them a little bit of a pass on that, especially once you recline uh, in the sofa. You're back far enough, it's not terrible. But what if you're like, yeah, I don't, I don't care about dinettes. You don't have to get it with a dinette, actually. That's one of the things I think is very cool about Surveyor. They standardize a ton of their seating setups. So like the seating there in the slide is a dinette by default. But what if you wanted a second theater seat for some reason? You could do that. And it includes a lagoon table for dining. What if you didn't want that though? What if you still want some guest sleeping space the way I would spec this one out? I would put a hide a bed in that slide because you've already got a theater seat staring at the entertainment. Now I've got extra seating for company. I've got extra sleeping for company and I still have dining. That would be my personal pick and preference, but that's just my two cents here. Now up top, keeping us cool is a 15,000 BTU air conditioner. And naturally that is centralized because you've got some private uh, bathroom action happening in the back. You got a private bedroom happening up front. And uh, otherwise it would be an awful steamy kind of situation going on in there. Um, upper left corner, uh, if you see that big black box on the side of the cabinet, that's the new charge controller. Uh, one of the things that they did based on a lot of consumer feedback, uh, you know, from videos like this, and, and I presume other sources, I doubt, I'm not, I'm not taking sole exclusive credit, like, hey, you folks on this video, you're the reason, you're probably a big factor though. Anyway, I'm sorry, what I'm getting at is they have significantly improved their solar package. We'll talk more about that outside. But one of the things I like here, I've seen a few other builders with similar floor plans, but they have absolutely jack and squat for countertop space. Now they've done some things here where the uh, removable backsplash cutting board for the stove fits perfectly now to become your sink cover. So that's like a half to three quarter inch chunk of wood that can really hold some weight that does a fantastic job. Not to mention if the sink and the stove are both in use, you still have that dedicated center space right there, which also means when you have dedicated open counter space, typically below that, you've got room for drawers and they did it. But instead of putting a fourth drawer on the floor, that is kind of hard to get to, they opted to stuff a central vacuum system down there with uh, that little electric toe kick, which is a handy dandy little thing. Actually, we're plugged in. I may be able to do a rare demo on that. It's like Ron Popeil, just flick it and forget it. So that's cool. I talk about those all the time, but I rarely display them. Now, the thing above that is the rest of the central vacuum where you can actually plug in a hose and all the 
hoses and connectors and the wands and things are all part of it. Um, oh, down below the stovetop, they added a little spice rack with that little band in there to help keep your spice blends in place. Uh, so if you're uh, Colonel Sanders, you could keep the, uh, you know, the, the six herbs down below and the five Spice Girls up above. That is the herbs and spices joke that you're getting today. By the way, if you check KFC out on Twitter, you'll find that KFC follows uh, exactly 11 people. Six guys named Herb and the five Spice Girls. The 11 herbs and spices. <laughs> that's, that's true, by the way. So this is what I was saying. If you sit down at the theater seat and someone's sitting at the toilet and they don't open the, or close the door, you are going to have one heck of a staring contest there, brother. That is always a tense moment. And frankly, I don't think anybody's truly, truly the winner. By the way, before I forget, because I have a tendency to do this, I'm trying to do a better job of pointing out kitchen outlets where I uh, spot them. They're under the overhead cabinets uh, in the case of this model. Working our way back here. Uh, so again, the bathroom, it's... I'm glad it's not any tighter. I think it's adequate for a person my size. If you're a person of larger stature, that may be a little bit tight on the elbows for you in there. But overall, I thought that around that porcelain foot flush stool, it wasn't too awful bad. Working our way around here, a lot of your controls for the bathroom are located down here, including your, uh, your new on-demand water heater controllers over here by these GFI outlets. Oh, I forgot about that. Anywhere that you have GFI outlets in the kitchen or the bathroom, those are inverter prepped, uh, which is something Surveyor didn't have last year. So if you do want to add an inverter to the RV, several of the plugs in the camper can run exclusively off battery power, although you tax your batteries harder doing that, but it's an option you have now. Headroom in this up here is great, like Tony the Tiger would say, because uh, the, the RV's got a six and a half foot, or nope, six nine ceiling, not six and a half foot. I need to get hydrated, it is hot, and I am tired. This is video number a billion for the day, and I'm wearing out. Over here, though, you've got yourself this big double door cabinet thing. Well, cracking that open, you've got just dedicated, like, linen storage shelving and an additional hanging closet, which I think is cool. You could always repurpose that hanging closet. I'd be kind of curious. How many of you do like having hanging closet right there, uh, storage in the bathroom? How many of you would kind of prefer that to be something, I don't know, a little bit more shelfy uh or you know those have you ever seen those little like hanging organizers that can hang off of a clothing rack or something those might work pretty well right there big panoramic viewing window overlooking the dining or the sofa depending on what you put there with uh breeze windows on either side and then giving ourselves a little bit of a look down here you can see you've got the knee knocker dining post i would probably personally swap those out although i'd probably personally not have to worry about it because i'd probably personally equip this thing with a sofa and now that we've talked about my personal probabilities let's look at the storage shall we uh dinette can fold down into a sleeper that is something to consider but uh a little bit of storage below the dinette which is cool but behind the television gigantic walk-in what i call pantry tainment center across from the big 12 volt dc compressor fridge which is very traveling friendly i've had a lot of people ask me recently yeah but, you know, I don't want to always have to work off my batteries like when I'm plugged into the park. When you're plugged in at park power, shore power, it will more than cover. Uh, maybe you don't realize that the, the park power will more than cover the, the, the power demands of this fridge very, very easily, actually. And even surplus charge your batteries. So that's not a problem or concern whatsoever. I, I guess some folks have been confused by that. And hopefully this helps demystify some of that. I'll do what I can where I can. By the way, what do you think of the updated decor and general look in this one? Um, overall, it's lighter than they were because they had kind of a borderline darker gray look about them before. They did go with a pretty obvious saddle brown accent color for their sofa stuff. I don't dislike it, but I'm frankly pretty easy to please. I'm not real picky when it comes to color palettes. Um, I don't know. Uh, to each their own. Some folks might like it. Some folks might not. By the way, the window in our entry door is prepped and ready uh, for one of those privacy shades. That is something, by the way, you don't have to pay a technician a bunch of money to install those. There are these four little clips, uh, two on the top, two on the bottom. You flick them open, put the shade in, flick it closed, and it just grabs it and holds it in place. Zero screwdriver work. Like, uh, there's, that, that's an easy thing you could, you know, potentially get off like Amazon and, and pop in yourself. Now, up here in the bedroom, 
that taller ceiling means they can put those overhead cabinets in and you can sit straight upright on that bed without ever clocking your noggin, which is nice. And that is a 60 by 80 true queen. No need to uh, worry about trying to get a longer mattress and there's still dedicated room to walk around it. And just in case you're curious, over there in the wall, they laminate like a galvanized uh, steel little backer plate in roughly in that ish location over there in case you feel like adding a tv i would definitely do it on an articulating swing arm um it kind of feels like maybe they should have done that over here though that wall to me would make a little bit more sense but you know whatever by the way in case you're curious there is a heat vent up here in the bedroom i've seen some campers that have missed critical core features like that behind the hanging wardrobe towers they've got a three level uh power tower pocket basically where you've got the two obvious shelves, but there's a hidden, almost, little shelf down below. And down below there is where there's a set of household outlets. There's even a little feed cord. It's like if you have like a USB charger or something like that, you've got the perfect place to be able to store uh, all kinds of those little things. Something else they do really well, they really crush the storage uh, around this bedroom. I think just absolutely fantastically. Something to this year, they had an easy lift uh, bed situation going on last year. But now for the 24 season, they've even added a couple drawers to the front of it. I wouldn't be, they're, they're telling me that those might get tweaked and changed a little bit. But basically, you won't necessarily have to lift the bed to get to the storage underneath it every single time. Just for those kind of not everyday use and, and function sort of features. One of the other things in this RV, it has some killer travel access. Because it doesn't matter if you get sofas or dinettes or anything, it's all encapsulated within that big, deep rack and pinion slide. And there's no, like, sometimes you'll watch my videos and I say, yeah, but if you bump the slide button a little bit, you can travel through. You don't got to worry about that. You've got yourself, uh, like, just a, a runway. You can get to the refrigerator, the toilet, the bed, the sink. All your really travel critical things, I feel, are available on this. I'm going to give it like an A- minus for travel function, just because it doesn't really have any functional seating you can use on the inside, but man, I'll take it. This is fantastic. Now, the exact answer to the question, is it half-ton towable, uh, really kind of varies based on the specific capacities of your half-ton and where you're taking it. What I mean is if you're going to go through some major elevation changes or some crazy windy plains areas, that equation changes. But for general flatland, modest terrain uh, towing, like I tend to personally experience, yeah. A tow package half ton will, generally speaking, handle this one pretty readily. That 30 foot size is also a really sweet spot uh, where, you know, 30 foot and under can typically fit within things like state and national parks far more easily, which is uh, really, really nice depending on where you're camping and what you have available in your backyard. By the way, you notice how all the little marker lights are out here? Here's a handy little pro tip. A lot of people uh, don't know this. If you take your seven way pigtail plug, if I can take to your seven week picture plug there we go i got it out of there you see the flat part at the top if you jump those two top ports with a fuse or really almost any piece of metal what you're doing is you're connecting the uh hot power line with the marker light line and you can have yourself some little outdoor glowy lights which some people think is cool however at night your neighbors might like that less so you know, try to be a respectful neighbor, as it were. Uh, up front here, behind the 20-pound propane tanks, we have ourselves a battery disconnect and the relay for our tire pressure monitor. The reason that's flashing red at us is saying, I can't make connection with the monitor thing, and that'll, you know, resolve itself as soon as you power that up. Uh, tankless on-demand water heater is a new for 24 kind of feature. Means that if there's, uh, you know, one of you or both of you like to take some long, hot showers, like maybe you were canoeing, and you went through a scummy creek or something like that, you could take a nice long hot shower and really get yourself cleaned out. That kind of reminds me, speaking from some personal experience, I did, I, when I was younger and in better shape, my wife and I, we would do like those mutter runs and we were very casual about it, like tough mutters and warrior dash and Spartan races and that kind of stuff. We had a lot of fun, but uh, where one of those uh, courses was located here in Michigan, they actually had you muck through, uh, you know, knee deep swamp and swamps are full of dead, rotting vegetation. And you walked out of that thing smelling like Bigfoot's backside. So a nice long hot shower after something like that would be pretty good. And I hope you enjoy that visual for the day. <laughs>
One of the things on this one, sometimes depending on where the camp kitchens and the baggage doors lie, Surveyor has trouble putting a really big awning on because there's just only so much available wall space. This one, they, they were able to thread the needle perfectly so that the camp kitchen is encompassed by the awning. And as a result, you have a really good sized awning on this thing. Now you can't really see it here from ground level too well, but just above the roof line right here, uh, you can see the little silver strip of the now 200 watt solar package as compared to the, it used to be 80 watts. So significantly improved compared to last year. And that's standard. They're doing that across the board on their big ones, their little ones, their any, any of them. Magnet holdbacks and a nice little feature on here, the slam latch doors. In this class and category, normally you have those little butterfly twist latch kind of jobs. The little one-handed convenience factors, those, so, so nice. Uh, I mentioned it previously, but uh, Surveyor is using Asdell. Basically, anywhere you see fiberglass, it's got Asdell behind it. So your front, your back, your sidewalls, your slides, you know, where, where you see fiberglass, there's a layer of Asdell directly behind it, taking some weight out of the RV. Something that you're not seeing though, is what's going on under the belly, because there've been some nice improvements there. Like I can point at the tires and you can, if I get you close enough anyway, you can probably easily discern that those are now Goodyear Endurance radials rather than import tires. But under the belly, previously it was enclosed and it was forced air heated and that's cool. But that's all it was by default. There was an option to add some other things, but what's standard now is they've uh, added radiant barrier layering to improve the efficiency of the heating package and, and in a sense the cooling package because cold air drops and it helps trap it so it doesn't bleed out of the floor as easily. Um, and they now have standard holding tank heaters, so a very respectable extended season package on these. Uh, you see the bracket in the top. I think a lot of viewers are becoming very accustomed to the idea of prep for a telescopic removable ladder, which is exactly what we're looking at here. One of the cool things on those is that it is uh, actually, the, those ladders can hold more weight. So uh, a, a bigger person like me, some RV ladders, I actually exceed the weight ratings on some factory uh, RV ladders but not those telescopic ones, they hold more weight. And speaking of that, previously Surveyor had a fold down cargo rack in the back, it was rated for 200 pounds, but the spare tire was attached to it and that worked against the 200 pound capacity. So it was already limited. They got rid of the floating cargo rack, which at first feels like, oh, they, they cheapened out. They didn't, they just transferred those dollars to a receiver hitch on the back that is 300 pound rated and that's not fighting the spare tire. Now, in case you're curious, you say, yeah, but the spare tire is directly in front of the carrier. Are they stupid? No, that spare tire can be shifted left to right as you need. Just make sure you don't block the taillights when you do that. But kind of like a telescopic ladder, that receiver hitch, it's more flexible, it can do more things, and it can hold more weight. So what do you think, guys? You said you wanted better solar, they did it. You wanted better tires, they did it. Like, the things you were looking for, I think they did pretty well, but that's just my two cents. Now, naturally, one of the things that factors in that equation is how much is this going to set me back? So I'd like to leave you some links down there in the video description, or you can scan that QR code if you're watching off your TV. And whether you're curious or whether you're serious, if we have one in stock, we're going to have it listed right on our website with discounted sale pricing, because you don't have to pay MSRP at Bishes. And did I say MSRP or B? I don't know. I'm tired. This is like recording number 11D for the day. I'm... But, um... We also don't do hidden dealer fees, but we like to give you information like this. We like to show you where an RV might work for you and where it might not work for you to help you buy your second camper the first time and respect the money that you're investing in one of these. So when you're ready, we're ready. And until then, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.